Hi, I'm James McGuire, and today we're talking about streaming analytics, streaming data, how to mine data from all that, that torrent streaming of data that's coming at us at all hours of the day and night. To discuss that, I'm joined by a real thought leader in the field. With me is Simon Crosby, Chief Technical Officer at Swim.ai. Uh, Simon, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, James. Good to be here. And, and, and does your company pronounce the name Swim.ai, or is it simply just Swim AI usually? Well, we call the open source, the open source project is called Swim OS. Okay. The company we generally just say Swim, right. um, but right. it's Swim AI. And I guess somewhere in here, I know we're going to be talking about streaming analytics. I want to get to the, the reality of why it's called dot AI, because I'm sensing there must be an artificial intelligence slash machine oh, learning component in there. Sure there is. I mean, I can cut the chase. Yeah, okay. let's, let's do that. Let's, let's, okay. let's talk about that. Yeah. So your viewers will be familiar with the fiction, which is given to them every day by folks like Google and Amazon and Microsoft, which is this. Some data scientists is going to sit in the cloud and take all this wonderful data and make a model mm -hmm. and then deploy it. You know what? Right. That's right. just right. such BS, right? I mean, well, that I'll happens lots to me. That, that happens in reality, right? Oh, I, I, it kind of does, but I'll give you lots of reasons why it won't happen for the world in general. Hmm. Um, and so in the Zoom worldview, what we do is we create digital twins from data sources on the fly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we do lots of them and we link them right. together and right. they train themselves and learn and predict. Right. So I sometimes call this as kind of these intelligent digital twins which learn and predict for themselves without people. Right, and actually let me do a little backstory for, in case anyone doesn't know what a digital twin is. Basically, it's a virtual model that, that models a thing that's going to exist in the physical world. And, and so right. you, can, you can run the digital twin and in theory find out how that real world thing is going to act. Yes. But, you know, yeah. Although one slight correction. Yes. It's not a thing that's going to be in the real world. It's a thing that's talking to you from the real world. So you create them when you receive data. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, and I'll give you a bunch of real world examples. Well, let's, let, me, let, me, let me let me get an overview for it. We may get there, but let's, let's sort, sort of an overview in that, you know, we were talking before we said it about all those devices being connected to the, to the internet, which is a massive, it's something like, you know, 2 million devices per hour, and it's something like, what, 2 yeah. billion per year, 20 billion, or what, what's 20, the number per year? 20, 20 billion of ARM CPUs a year. That, yeah. that, that is just, a, uh, so there's a massive torrent of data coming at us you know, at all times, industrial devices, you know, phones, refrigerators, yep. coffee machines. I mean, just, you know, you name it, it's out there and it's connected to the internet. And, and of course we need our refrigerators connected to the internet. How can we deal without that? Right. Uh, well, actually, but, yes. So, so you can think the big data from 20 years ago, whatever, 15 years ago. Right. As being a rational approach to what was then a finite amount of data being generated every day. Right. But you say that, you know, these streams never stop. They're boundless. Right. Um, you have a whole different problem. And, and it, because it's infinite. In other words, the, 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 there's no it, limit. It's like, it's well, going to be 20 billion this year. It's going to be 25 billion next year. I mean, it's going to be like, so. Well, yeah, that, two that, things, two things. Yes, One please. is the, the data is infinite, but also it's of short value, short term value. Right, right. Okay? And so then you have this problem, which is that if you store it, it's probably already out of date. And also you have this desire to move to what we call continuous intelligence, which is right. the ability to make decisions on the fly, not mm -hmm. wait for the next batch run, okay? So you have to make decisions from data of limited lifespan quickly, which mm -hmm. means you have to do it all the time. And that's a big challenge. Well, all right, so there, here's, here's a two part question then. So is there really a way to glean data from all this, this glean value from all this data that is flowing from us to, to us? Sure. And then the other, the other part of that question is, is this something that a lot of businesses are currently doing, or is this really a, a, as far ahead of the curve as it seems to be? I know there is streaming data, streaming analytics, but it feels like it's, it's closer to its infancy than, than, than some forms of analytics. So yeah, I, take I, that question for well, what you will. Yeah. I'll take it in reverse order. So I think you're right. You. It is relatively early. Mm -hmm. And I think of stream analytics as very much a top-down view. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of been solved for some verticals. So, for example, if you look at application performance management, 
it's pretty good there, right? You can mm-hmm. launch all your Kubernetes gunk in, in the AWS and track it, right? That's cool. Mm-hmm. There's, and there's a bunch of companies who are solving that vertical problem. In general, um, the broader problem is much bigger than this. Let me give you a really wild example. Okay. In, in Dubai, we do a ton of stuff with city traffic. Mm-hmm. And the application needs to do Uh, Simon, you you might have frozen in your picture. Are you are you there? You might have been having Wi-Fi problems. When a truck with bad braking behavior, in the sense so, that so, watching. Simon, let me let me interrupt you for one second because your picture froze for a second, and so did your audio. Could you give oh. us a quick a quick recap of the last say fifteen twenty seconds or so? Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So let me give you this really cool example from Dubai yes. where okay. we do uh, smart city work. Um, when a truck with bad braking behavior is approaching an inspector, tell the inspector. Okay, this is not analytics in the sense of a top-down view. This is not a city manager saying, how many bad trucks do I have? This is a need to respond in real time to every inspector in the city for potentially every truck. But more than that, every time I get an update to the position of any truck or an inspector, I have to reevaluate the conditions, these predicates of bad breaking behavior or where is the inspector and so on, right? And solve a geofencing problem, which is, is the truck approaching an inspector? By the way, approaching is different than driving away from. Right. Okay? And so this notion of continuous intelligence is also based on the idea that information is situationally relevant. It's highly contextually bound, right? T- time-based and, and geo-based. Time-based and geo-based, right. if it's real world. But for example, um, correlation. Mm. This mm. and that means the, you know, this thing and that thing within some time frame means the engine might catch fire. Right. Okay. And so information streams from sources are contextually, contextually related to one another. And they are probably related in time domain and other things. And as anybody who's in the data science domain knows, you have to find this stuff out, right? Mm -hmm. You have to Mm -hmm. figure it out. And now we have to figure it out on the fly. Now, let me give you a little bit of a head flip. The problem I've described is a little bit like LinkedIn for things. Hmm. Okay, so if I'm your friend on LinkedIn, I get to see your updates in real time. Well, as soon as you publish them, right? Sure. Okay, so think of two things like the truck and the inspector. Um, when the truck is in range of the inspector, they link, right? Mm-hmm. And then the inspector can see where the truck is. And uh, I'm talking digital twins, obviously. Sure. And, sure. and we can then figure out what to do. And so we're talking about graph structures, not necessarily just big, big data or no SQL stores, right? Mm-hmm. Graph structures, which are inherently fluid, and where the analysis is continuous and on the fly. And that's kind of what we do in SOMOS. Right. 